Last time I tried to do a webinar like this, some of my images didn't show and it was a little bit annoying. Um, hi, Alicia. Hi, Renee. All right, so we're going to go present. Can you guys let me know that that's just showing full screen and everything's working okay? That would be fantastic. So the theme today or the purpose today or what you want, what I want you to be kind of thinking about is doubling your business. So what that looks like is however much money your business is making right now per week or per month, depending on how you track your revenue. Most people track their like monthly revenue. Um, what is that if it is twice as much? This is something that I have personally done myself multiple times. I know it is possible to double a business in a year because I did it back when I had my salon. I started, I doubled it the first year. Then I doubled that again the second year. Then I doubled it again the third year. Um, I also did it with my wholesale range when I started selling wholesale hair extensions. Um, got that up to six figures in selling wholesale hair to salons around the world within 12 months. Um, I also had I started an advertising agency a couple of years ago, maybe a few years ago. It was 2020 when I started it actually, so a few years ago, and um, built that up to 100K the first year, then 250K the second year. And just by following that formula and also when I started my coaching business, the first year was six figures, like 100,000. Then I went up to um, 250,000. Then it was, actually, I always get this wrong because I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, and then the third year was like 400. No, it's wrong. Because I know my fourth year was 1.2 million. So if I go backwards from that, the fourth year was 1.2 million. The next year down was like, 800 and something that was 400 and something so it must have been 200,000 in the first year okay I need to go back and check my numbers but I know that's what happened and it all happens because there is a formula and a process and a mindset that I follow and I love helping other people to understand this as well because if you are in a place where you're like I'm ready to grow I want to grow and you've realized that what you're currently doing maybe isn't working or you're not growing as fast as you want to be growing um like something needs to change and you know this already you know that you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for different results so um thank you alicia for letting me know that it's working okay so what we're going to do today is I want to help you to understand how to double your hair or beauty business. So most of my clients that I work with are within the hair or beauty industry. I do have some outside of that industry that are still getting good results from my stuff, but the majority are in hair and beauty because that's my background and that's what I um, used to do. So with using Facebook and Instagram to bring in new clients and build your brand, that's my zone of genius. It's my area of specialty. i I'm always coming up with ideas and ads and things and um, helping people to bring in more clients. So grab a pink fluffy pen if you have one. <laughs> Highly recommend. They're really um, sensory and fun. Um, and your favorite notepad and pen or just take screenshots <laughs> and get ready to make some notes if you are ready to start growing. So um, I always like to know who is doing what when you're joining me live for these webinars or even in the replay. So if you can let me know what your two or three most popular and profitable services are right now, that would be really cool. Um, just so I get an idea of what kind of industries are here. Um, knowing me, well, knowing this will also help me to give you some ideas and some examples for getting more clients if that comes up in conversation along the way. So myself personally, I used to specialize in hair extensions, lash extensions, and spray tanning in my own salons. And I can see we've also got Vivian, Alita, Nicole, and Tina here. Uh, Mikhail, Mikhail does facials and eyebrows. Okay, that's really cool. Um, Laura does nails. Thank you. Nicole does laser genesis and brows. Laura does facials. Body sculpting for Tina. Emma's just joined. Awesome. Cool, cool. And Rachel does eyebrow tattooing and lip blush. So we've got quite a good um, variety here. No hair so far. That's interesting. Normally lots of hair salons. Um, Vivian does massage, signature massage. Cool. So yeah, my specialties used to be hair extensions, lash extensions, and spray tanning in the opposite order. I started with spray tanning, then I added 
hair extensions, then I added lash extensions <laughs> as I was growing. It used to be just spray tanning and hair extensions and I added lashes. I also dabbled with quite a few different services throughout my time having salons. But what I realized was that my market and my clients um, just wanted these three services from me the most. Like every time I added another service like makeup or waxing or nails, um, they seem to be really hard to sell. And I'd sometimes put a lot of energy into trying to promote the services that weren't selling, um, which I later realized was a complete waste of time because businesses grow faster when you focus on what people actually want to buy from you. So if you're trying to push something, this is a really, really important lesson. If, if you're trying to push something, a product or a service that you want to sell, that you want to do more of that you want to be known for but it's like hard to sell and people aren't buying it but everyone that's booking in with you is booking in for these other two services your business will grow so much faster if you focus on these other two services that people want to buy and put the majority of your marketing and advertising efforts into promoting those things because the market your market the people that see your stuff and follow you they literally tell you with their money and attention what they want. So if you as an entrepreneur learn to listen to that and to pay attention to that and take your emotion and your preferences completely away for, from it, your business can grow so much bigger and so much faster if you focus on like look at your numbers, do a printout of your reports and whatever and look at the last two months and see like what are the most popular services. That's what people want to buy from you. So if you try and focus on promoting and marketing what people want to buy from you rather than what you want to sell, um, you will grow so much faster. You've got to listen to your market. We've also got Renee does relaxation facials, LED facials, Olivia's tanning and teeth whitening, Alicia's juggling a baby. <laughs> Used to be nail art, now you're a mentor. I know Alicia's amazing, by the way. Um, Vicky, multiple incomes, kahuna massage, soaps, lip balms, jewelry. Oh my gosh, you've got, and a yoga teacher. Okay. You're a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Cool. Melanie said half and a full head of foils. Vicky, quick question. Which one of those makes you the most money and which one's the most popular? Because if you're going to focus on growing something, that's what I would focus on. The more you spread your focus over multiple things. And here's another quick story before we continue, because I had multiple different businesses. Um, the less they all grow because your focus is so scattered. So at the end of this, I'm going to share my strategy when I like would grow a business because I'd start one business, get it growing, then start another one, get it growing, start another one, get it growing. I have a strategy. So let's go. Let's keep continuing because otherwise I'll talk forever. Um, side note, I am not one of the social media coaches who just focuses on getting followers and engagement. That is all well and good as well. Super important. But my main focus is on getting paying clients, making money and growing a business. Um, I use social media to grow and double businesses. Engagement is important and it's a part of that. But likes and followers often just boost your ego, bookings and sales and clients boost your bank account. So that's what I am all about. Vicky said kahuna massage, probably the most money, but takes a lot of energy. Yeah, right. So you've got to have other things around that. Makes sense. Okay. So I also love to help people actually set their businesses up to give them a lot more money and freedom. Um, personally, myself, I've always set up my businesses, businesses so that I work on the things that I want to and that I'm best at because I know I suck at a lot of things. So I delegate as much as possible. Um, I just do the things that I enjoy and that I'm best at. And I believe that's one of the best things about having a business is that you can do that you can like write your own position description um and that's your job and i believe you should always have i also believe you should have a lot of cash in your savings account so that you can feel totally safe secure and wealthy so um i've never read that book profit first but i know a lot of people have and they follow that system of like you take a little bit of profit every week and you put it aside and that becomes your savings i've kind of just always done that and so i've always been able to grow businesses without being in financial trouble. So this webinar and what I teach and do is not a quick fix type of thing. I am in business for life. I'm a born entrepreneur. I've always been starting businesses. I can't stop. I can't turn it off. Even if and when I want to, it's always there. So 
are you <laughs> as well because that's what's going to help you to continue to grow if you're just in business like for a quick fix or to try and make money um you usually are not the type of person that's going to have a you know massive long-term success so how many of these can you relate to right now your current followers are not buying your current followers are not ideal clients they might be people in different industries or people in your own industry that are just following you but not actually buying from you um you need more bookings you need more appointments you need more sales clients um your posts aren't getting customers. So every time you post, you're kind of like not getting people reaching out after seeing them. Um, you don't know what to post. You've tried ads and they didn't work. I've got so many people that come to me. They're like, oh, I tried ads. I tried boosted posts and they just didn't work. So I just gave up. Um, but they still want to learn. And, and that's all, there's always a reason why they didn't work. I had a full conversation with one of my clients today, breaking down the psychology behind why some of her ads didn't work. And we decided we just needed to scrap trying to sell what she was trying to sell. And we need a completely different offer because clearly her market doesn't want that. <laughs> kind of what I was just saying before. Sometimes you're like, you're just trying to push something that people don't want. You've got to change the whole, like what you're promoting or how you're promoting it. Um, you want to grow your brand. In 2024, you want like more followers to be more well-known, to have a good reputation. Um, you want to make heaps of money and you are determined to improve things. Alicia's eight and nine. Yay. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Rachel. Um, Vicky says eight so I can be secure and independent. Yes. Tina says three, seven, eight and nine. Awesome. Let's keep going. I've got a lot to share. So um, if you are a new friend of mine, I always like to give a little um, introduction. I know I always I just kind of mentioned what I did at the start, so I'll just kind of rush through this. Um, but yeah, I grew a chain of tanning, lash and hair extension salons when I was in my 20s. I used Facebook, Instagram, and lots of boosted posts to grow it. I had my own wholesale range. I had um, 100 salons around the world stocking my brand of hair extensions. I also had a wholesale um, spray tan solution that I had and lash extensions as well but the hair extension wholesale did better and made me more money so as I was talking about before I focused most of my energy on that and I eventually got rid of the other two and that became more successful uh, and I set up the whole business to be able to run without me working in it so that's another thing that I'm super passionate about um, after owning all the salons for eight years I started to get bored I realized I loved social media marketing the most it was my favorite part um, I, and I just, yeah, I liked it. I was always coming up with ideas for posts and new ads and I was just all over it. So I started sharing tips to try and help other salons to improve their posts and attract more customers, um, back in 2014. And I realized that people liked it and wanted more and kept asking me questions and kept asking me to help them. So I was like, huh, this is a new business opportunity because listening to the market, this is what people are asking for. So this is what they want. So let's, let's do that. Um, and I have not looked back since. So that it'll be 10 years in 2024 that I've been doing this now. Um, I've had over 4,000 clients in the last decade in that time. And I've helped a lot of them to grow to multi-locations, to double and triple the money they make and to build very successful businesses that can work without them running in it. So I've worked with um, people that own franchises like Ella Bache, Hair House Warehouse, and lots of just small independent businesses, some that have multi-locations, some that are from home. And I have, you know, so many different varieties. Um, Cara was an Ella Bache owner. And when she came to me, she was like depressed and about to claim <clears throat> bankruptcy. And then I helped her change her social media posts and she ended up get, having a million dollar year. She had, she was doing 12K a week inside a shopping center, which is just kind of breaking even and got up to $21,000 a week. And then she sold her business quite successfully. So those are the things that can be possible for you when you improve your marketing, basically. Um, we've got Kay and Jessica there. Hello, guys. Oh, girls, ladies. So these are a couple of other results that um, I've helped people to achieve. My business doubled in revenue last financial year, looks to four times this year. I now work in my business only three days a week and I work on it one to two days. I spend the other days with family and friends. I've gone from being a lone wolf to having two staff and not worrying if I am there. Um, if you're starting out in this course and freaking out a bit, trust me, it's worth it if you take it all in and implement things. So that's lovely. Um, this other one said, we now know how to create the right ads that bring us leads. We know how to boost posts and run adverts, delegate, 
things and concentrate not working just in the business but on it. Um, the mindset and attitude Carissa teaches, this program teaches is amazing and you really can do anything if you put your mind to it. We've managed to buy our dream car, start a wholesale brand, increase our sale on prices and gain new clients with the increased turnover and hopefully to go up again next year. So that's the kind of stuff that I like to do. And please change slides, Mrs. Computer. Here we go. Did I miss one? I did. It's having a moment. Okay, I did that one. I did that one. Here we go. So um, another thing that I like to just share to see how many people I have things, <laughs> random things in common with, because this is what social media is all about. I did a story about this today. It's like the more, if you can put some personal stuff about your personal life in to your marketing, it really helps like to people to connect with you a little bit more. So I'm a little bit into astrology, but not really. I'm a Libra. Sun, Gemini, Moon, Leo, Rising. So if you're into astrology, that's cool. I like astrology people. Um, I'm obsessed with personality types. I like literally everyone that I meet. I'm like trying to t figure out their personality type, or I get them to take the test because it's so true. And once I know someone's personality type, I know like what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how they're gonna behave, how they see the world, etc. So in Myers Briggs personalities, I'm an INFP slash ENFP. Um, in human design, I am a manifesting generator. In numerology, I am a life path 11, which means I'm supposed to be a teacher and in some ways a spiritual teacher. It's like literally my path and purpose. Um, I'm a boy mom. I have two little boys aged four and seven, Jaden and Riley. Um, I was in a very unfulfilling marriage for quite a long time and I'm now with a new partner doing a mixed family thing. Um, he's got two kids. I've got two kids. So it's it's fun. Um, I'm a little bit bougie. I like fancy bags. I like fancy cars. Um, I'm a little bit bogan, probably a bit more bogan than bougie, to be honest, although I don't take all the pictures of myself when I'm the bogan. Trackies, Uggs, messy buns most days. Um, I'm a little bit ADHD or actually really a big bit. I'm all over the place, but it's, you know, I try to focus on the strengths. Um, and I'm a little bit woo-woo. I'm really into law of attraction and mindset and energy and all that good stuff. Renee said, I am your twin, except you're a Pisces. <laughs> oh, you have the same birthday as me, Vicky. That's cool. Um, so, and I have way too many ideas for my own good. I'm definitely one of those business owners that has so many ideas and I want to do them all, but I can't because time and because energy is limited. So I really try to have good focus and discipline and stuff these days with kids I used to have a lot more you know freedom to create but if you have children you know what I mean um it, it's kind of disappears um and I'm kind of addicted to my business and never stop thinking about it for too long okay so social media has actually paid for my entire life um I bought my dream home on top of a mountain um I bought the rainforest next door to my home because it went up for sale when I bought my house I paid cash for that um, so that I don't have to have any neighbors and the block of land has already doubled in value. So that was a good investment. Um, I send my kids to a beautiful private school that encourages their natural interests. It's kind of like a Steiner school, but it's not like, it's like a mixed kind of thing, but yeah, they don't, they, they kind of see their differences and don't force them to learn all at the same way or the same things. Um, I sometimes rent beachfront apartments to work and live in for six months of the year. If I feel like a sea change. Um, I have a beautiful car and I have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, literally all because of social media and because of the doing the things that I'm going to share with you today. So it is a little bit of a brag, but it's also just facts. Like this is literally what social media has done for me and my life. And so um, this is why I like to teach other people how to do it as well, because I believe that when you get it right, like your life can change. It's so powerful. Um, but even though I have been pretty successful in business, I have also dealt with a lot of really hard things along the way. Um, I believe it's important to share this stuff as well, not just all of the shiny, you know, shiny things. Um, I've had staff that have lied to me. I've had staff that have stolen from me, like money and stock and poaching clients. I've had psychopath clients, the type that just relentlessly try to like destroy you and leave negative reviews, um, demand refunds, all of that kind of stuff. And it's like, horrible if you've been through any of that stuff like I just think about it and I remember exactly how it feels 
Um, I've had emotionally abusive relationships. I've been through severe depression and anxiety. I've tried different medications and stuff over the years because I've been in bad places. Um, choose not to be on anything um, most at, at these days or hopefully never. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm having two little boys, been through a divorce. Um, I felt like I didn't care. I felt like business is too hard. I felt like I wanted to give up like multiple times. And I tend to alternate between ADHD, super go, 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 manic mode, and then like complete another burnout, which I manage a bit better these days than I used to. If I'm honest with myself, I do have a much better balance now and a little system for myself. Um, but I just wanted to share this because life and business can be really, really hard sometimes. Um, but I still believe you can grow a successful business and life for yourself, despite what happens and what life throws at you. Um, I refuse to be a victim for too long and I keep getting up and keep working on myself. So, um, uh, Mikhail says, that's totally me. I need to keep saying focus and not run to the new idea. Yes. Um, cool. So in every business that I started and built, I've made sure to always focus on everything I do from the customer's perspective as well. This is a really important part of marketing um, and sales. So I believe that the purpose of a business is to help and serve your market to get them what they want. A lot of business owners focus so much on themselves and what and what they want, what I want. I want people to do this. I want people to do this. I want to sell this. I want that. Um but your business is actually there. Like the purpose of it is to serve the customers. The business exists for the customers. So yes, we start businesses to make money and experience freedom for ourselves. And we get to design the lifestyle that we want. Um, but you still do need to genuinely care about the people that you're helping with your services. You need to stay focused on what they need the majority of the time. Your marketing is for them not about the products and services so much as for what it's going to do for them, for other people, how it helps them, why they need it, um, and what you can do for them, what your business can do for them all the time if you want to succeed long term. So this, I believe, is one of the main secrets, or not secrets, but things that helped every business I ever started to double every year because I don't obsess over what I want. I obsess about what my market wants. And everything I do is for my ideal clients and my market and the people that I want to help. And if they're not buying from me, I take responsibility. I'm like, well, I need to do more work. I need to figure it out. I need to ask them more questions. I need to know more about them. I need to know what they want to see. Like I don't ever, ever blame other people or the market or anything for why something isn't working. I take complete full responsibility for everything all the time. Um, so something that you need to know about social media is it is literally just people. And there's so many different types of people out there in the world, as you know, like people are weird, people are interesting, people are terrible and people can be amazing. Um, but we are all very self-focused human beings are just, yeah, thinking about themselves 90% of the time. There's so many different personalities and beliefs and lifestyles and values. And some people are really negative. Some people are really skeptical. Some people are very positive and grateful. Some people are very closed minded. Some people are very open minded. All of us have challenges. All of us have desires. Some people are really kind and lovely. And some people are mean and selfish. Some people really care about people and some don't give a fuck about anyone other than themselves. Um, you've probably let me know if you've dealt with all of these types of people, because I certainly have. Um, to, so to attract more clients into your business, you first need to know what kind of people you want to attract into your business. Because when I ask people like, well, who's your target client or who are the type of people that you want? And they say everyone. I'm like, well, do you want all of these people? <laughs> do you, are these all the people that you want? Sometimes it's not about just like gender and age and location. It's about like, who is the type of person that we want to attract? Because you need to design your brand and your marketing around attracting that type of personality. Otherwise, if you don't, you are going to attract the mixed bag and you'll have clients that um, you don't love. Tina said, yep. Vivian says, I certainly have. Cool. If anyone wants to share stories about them, go for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> I've got a lot. But otherwise, I'll take your word for it. Tina says, wealthy, nice people. Perfect. Excellent. That's the great, that's a great goal. 
Um, so if in Facebook targeting terms, if we're thinking wealthy, nice people, here's a little tip for you. The type of people that you probably interest that you want to use are things like self-development. If they work on themselves, do they read a certain book? Do they follow Tony Robbins? Do they wear Louis Vuitton? Do they go on cruises? These are all things that you can put in your Facebook interests. Write that down. I didn't put it in the webinar. Um, but also, um, yeah, you need to know what kind of people you want to attract into your business and also what kind of people are the ones who want and need your services because this is something else that you need to pay attention to. Sometimes the people that you want to attract are not the people who are wanting and needing and buying your services. And I have a little side story about this is when my, some of my favorite clients when I did hair extensions um, and spray tans, they were in their 30s and 40s. I've always... I always I get along with um, people that are older than me, even though I'm late thirties now and about to be in my forties, but I used to be in my twenties. <laughs> so a lot of my favorite clients were older. They were more successful. They were business owners um, and that kind of stuff. And I got along personally really well with them. But when I looked at the numbers and I looked at the stats, most of the clients where all the money was coming from were girls in their early twenties, because they're the ones that wanted the tans and the hair extensions done all the time. So my personal ideal client was not actually the ideal client that the business needed to grow and survive. So really kind of take that on board is that sometimes the people that you don't, it's not that I didn't want those people. It's just that I, I preferred a different kind of person, but that was me personally. The business needed the young girls to survive and grow. So when I started taking my focus off that and started being like, well, I want to just target 30s and 40s women, um, it slowed down because that wasn't the market for that service. So sometimes you have to take your personal preferences out of your business if you want it to grow or sometimes you need to change it if you if you want to change it. So yeah, that's why I changed business, uh, careers as well is because I realized I just like talking to business owners all the time. So I'm like, right here, I'm going into marketing. <laughs> um but yeah, not everyone wants what you sell or even likes it. So in order to attract the people that you want into your business on your social socials, you need to show your personality. You need to show your values. You need to show your thoughts and your experiences because people don't connect with businesses. They connect with relatable humans. So if you want your social media to attract more of the people that you want, it has to have some behind the scenes stuff, some personal stuff. Some, a bit of personality, a bit of a sense of humor, um, or at least like some different angles that aren't just all about showing your work all the time. Because if you are just showing your work all the time, people can't connect with your brand or with you. So this is a really good thing to think about. Um, so my target clients, just for an example of this, and you can go and do this exercise after if you like, the clients I like to attract and work with are the type of people who are talented, they're hard workers, they're passionate about what they do, they're optimistic, they're growth-minded, they believe anything is possible, they are mentally strong because they've been through a lot of hard things and they've got this sense of resilience and they just keep getting up and they keep going after they have a little cry and a mental breakdown, of course. Um, they're usually really empathetic people. They are emotional and they care a lot about people. They want to. They really want to build something like big, like a brand that they care about and that helps a lot of people. Um, they take responsibility. They don't blame their clients, the market or their ads or Facebook or whatever for why they aren't busy enough. They don't blame the algorithm. They want to learn how to get better um, for why they aren't busy enough. They're committed to always improving and they're always and making things work. Um, they usually take action quickly. They like to learn they value investing their time in their education um, and they've just got this like kind of hunger to grow and make a lot of money without shame. Kay says, you're talking about me. Perfect. See, my marketing has done its job. If you're here, Kay, <laughs> uh, it's, it's worked. Thank you. <laughs> um, cool. So another thing that you need to consider when using social media to grow your business is what's called the friendship factor, which is from Brian Tracy, one of my favorite um, authors and sales coaches and stuff. If you like listening to audiobooks, go and start listening to Brian Tracy's The Psychology of Sales on Audible. I listen to it like 
I've listened to it multiple times because I want it to sink in. It's one of those books that I'm like, I don't want to forget this. Like, I want this to be my thing. He's amazing at like sales psychology. Um, But he says in that book, a person will not buy from you until they are genuinely convinced that you are their friend and you are acting in their best interests. So one of the mistakes that I see so often when I'm helping people with their social media posts and getting clients with their ads is they just try to be a business that's selling things. They don't try to be a person that's making a friend. It's a big difference. Um, Alicia, I know you are my ideal client. I actually have your name written down on a piece of paper somewhere around my desk because I was doing um, an ideal client thing the other day. And I'm like, if I picked one client off the top of my head, who would it be? Alicia. (laughs) And Michael's the same. Um, So... Yeah, I, I see people just like someone will ask for the price, you know, and, and they're really blunt with you. And if, if this is happening to you, then this is an area that you do need to improve. If clients are talking to you really bluntly as well, like they're just going price, how much is it? Where are you located? They're not saying hi, they're not being friendly or anything. It, there's usually because there's some kind of personal connection missing in the marketing. They just see you as a transaction. They just see you as a business. They're not seeing you as a helpful human being. So if you change a little bit in your marketing and you change a little bit in your conversations and let's say you start introducing yourself, you start putting some pictures of yourself into your marketing, all of a sudden you're a human and they're going to talk to you like you're a human and you get to talk to them like they're a human and you're going to get a lot more clients because of that. Um, So personally, I've always tried to imagine that everything that I post on social media is for one of my favorite clients. Like I literally, if I'm going to do a post, I'm like, before I post it, I'm like, who is this for? And I'll think about, oh, Jesse will like this. Or oh, this one's for Alicia. Or, oh my God, um, Sarah asked me about this topic the other day. I have to talk about it in my post. So my posts are always for someone. Um, and when I chat to people in Messenger, I've never spoken to before. If it's someone brand new, like I'm going to talk to them as if they're already my friend or they're already my client. Um, I use emojis. I use lots of short messages. Like I would be texting someone excitedly. I always heart react to their messages. Um, The same way I would text my best friend. I treat every single person that I talk to like that. And so they feel comfortable and warm and like I'm just a friendly, helpful person. I do not try to be a professional, strict, serious business. That might work for you if you have that kind of personality though. So I don't want to completely rule it out but usually putting a little bit of warmth in like a smiley face or a love heart or just like, hey, babe, or just introduce yourself like, hey, I'm Carissa, nice to meet you, rather than just business. Um, (laughs) The more serious and professional you try to be, the less human you seem and the less people will connect with you. So this goes for your ads as well. When your ads are too serious and professional and focused on the service, um, They just don't connect with it. Whereas the more personality your ads have, the more interactive they are. Um, People like them more, they pay attention and they're going to engage with you. So that's one of the things that I do a lot of is I I write a lot of posts. I write a lot of ads that are written like a friend. They're written really casually and they ask people to interact and comment and that's why they get comments. Um, Cool. So social media is designed to be social. If you use social media for business, you need to imagine that all your followers are friends of your business. If you want them to interact with you, you have to make sure that what you're posting is interesting for them and that there is a reason for them to comment or message you. If, if there's no reason or no benefit to them for commenting on your post, that's why you're not getting comments. Um, now, not every single post that I write is asking a question or trying to get people to comment but a lot of them are about like maybe a topic that other people are like, oh, me too. Or, you know, and and people just start um, commenting because there's a reason for them. There's a benefit for them to comment or message. So you still can and should share pictures of your work, of course, because that's how you sell what you do. Um, But to make it more interesting for your audience, in the captions, you should try and start telling stories, asking questions, educating them on what you did, how you did it, show behind the scenes stuff, share reasons why that customer wanted or got that service, or explain to people why they should use or try what you sell or why other people use or try what you sell, how it makes their life better. 
So kind of the same way that you would tell them about it in person. So just imagine that, like if someone called you up on the phone or walked into your salon and started asking you about a service, you'd probably ask them some questions. Um, you'd probably tell them some stories of other customers. You'd probably try and like show them stuff. Your social media marketing should be like that as well. So if you haven't used this template of mine yet, and I just saw Nikki Taylor joined, hello, um, please screenshot and try this one because it can work really, really well. And this is a really simple, casual example of like one of my posts that you can also use as an ad because this has got people a lot of clients. Um, this is one of my templates that will give you a lot of engagement from your current followers as long as you have enough current followers. There's a different strategy if you have like no followers and you need to build them up, but most of you guys have some followers. Um, and this one could also make you some money and get you some bookings. So you'll ideally need to follow my sales script strategy as well, um, which is inside my program though. So I can't give that away for free, um, but to know what to say to get the bookings, but I will tell you about that. So screenshot this or retype this, post it on your Facebook page, and you can use it as an Instagram caption. And if it works well for you, I want you to think about working with me because I've got so many more <laughs> like this. So I'm just giving some freebies out. Um, so this style of post is going to get so many more comments than your usual posts, I'm guessing, because it's about the reader. It's about the person that's reading it. It's not about you and it's not about the service. So the post says, Alicia, you should definitely try it. The post says, hey, with three Ys. Um, so if you see this post, can you help us out? Can you comment A, if you're a regular at our salon, B, if you visit occasionally, C, if you follow us but have never been in, and D, if you are new here and would like a welcome voucher. So you might, you usually what happens is you'll get a lot of people commenting A and B and saying nice things about you and then you comment back to them and you reply and you're like, thank you so much. Or, I love seeing you in here or hope to see you again soon, stuff like that. And then if they say C or D, you can say to a C person, they follow you, but they've never been in like, oh, I hope to see you soon. Or, um, you know, are you interested? Would you like a copy of our price list or like things like that to try to start a conversation with them? And if they say D, then they are actually interested in coming in. And yes, they'd like a welcome voucher, which is a whole ad strategy that I teach. So message them and get into a conversation um, about making a booking basically. Alicia said, if you don't already, you need to work with Carissa. Thank you. Alicia has an amazing success story, actually. She's uh, did implemented one thing that I told her like last month and she's signed up. 250 clients. I am not joking. <laughs> not joking. It's amazing. I think, think I did a post about it the other day or it's on Instagram. Anyway, I'll talk about that in another post, but amazing. Um. So you need to offer something that they want to buy. So one of the re reasons businesses struggle to get clients is because they are more focused on what they want to sell than what the customer wants to buy. I said this before. I'm going to say it again. It's really important. So when I started my salons, I just knew, like, I just understand kind of how people are. Like, I don't ever expect that someone's just going to choose my business. I know if someone's shopping around for a spray tan or hair, exten hair extensions, they're going to be looking at all the other people out there that do it they're going to be trying to find a good deal so I knew that they were going to be doing that um, so I created special offers for new clients that I kept changing and mixing up for variety as well so that my business was the easy obvious choice so if I put myself in their shoes and I'm like hmm, I need a spray tan and I start googling spray tans in the area that I'm in um, I want them to see like obviously a really nice website that they kind of relate to. It has a bit of personality. It's not just just about spray tans. It has some personality. They're like, this business looks cool. Um, it looks like it's for my for me, for my type of person. And then I have some really irresistible offer that's like, if you've never been here before, you need to try this. Um, so I didn't ever see it as cheapening my brand though. Like I, some people go like, oh, if you offer discounts, are you devaluing yourself? Personally, I've never looked at it like that. I have always made sure that I've covered costs and still made a profit when I do a discount. Um, but I see it from the customer's perspective of they're getting a really good deal and I'm making it really easy for them to try me. So I still do that in my online business now. I have some offers that are like cheap and discounted or free because I want to make it really easy for people to try me because I don't expect that people will just 
find me, see my stuff and buy from me right away. That doesn't, it's not how people work. Um, so yeah, I saw about, I saw it about the benefit to the client. They were getting a really great deal. And this is how I grew so fast. Now, of course I did attract some non-ideal clients, but most of them were amazing. And they came back again for years and they told other people about me and it was just good. So you need to create promotions and offers that you know your clients are going to be excited about and your clients are going to love. Um, don't just think about what you want people to buy. It's really, really important. Um, Rachel said, what the actual fuck amazing? Yes, I know. <laughs> if you're talking about Alicia and the clients that she got. Um, crazy. Actual crazy. Um, so pay attention to what people are paying for um this is why i asked earlier what your most popular and profitable services are because if you want to make a lot of money you have to focus on promoting what you know your market actually wants to buy so people want to buy what they want to buy and this is not always what you want them to buy so if you look at where most of your money is coming from and what new clients are asking for and buying and you go all in on advertising those you're going to grow so fast if you continue to resist it and you continue to go, oh, I want to sell this other thing over here and I want to sell this and I want to do that, but it's not what people want to buy. It's just going to continue to be hard. And I know that it can sometimes be a, a head fuck um, because you're like, oh, but that's not what I want. <laughs> that's not what I want. Um, but you, there is a happy medium. that There is, I promise you, in there. Like you can either build a business that sells something that you don't like to do, but you hire someone else to do it. I've done that as well. Um, I hated selling wholesale products, to be honest. I set up that whole business to run without me. I didn't want to do, do anything with it. Um, I didn't like packing orders. I didn't like taking orders. I didn't like answering emails. I still had that business, but someone else did it. Someone else ran it for me. So um, stock orders, you know, all that fun stuff it was boring, <laughs> but it made me money. So think about what are most clients buying from you right now? So there's also, there's usually five different types of people on social media that um, are out there or that are following you already. Just going to have a sip of water because I talk a lot. Not in general though. I talk a lot when I'm live. The rest of my life, I'm pretty quiet and silent. Um, yep. <laughs> Fun fact, introverted, extrovert. So ready to buy is only about 3.5% of the market. So if you think about all the people in your local area or town that could potentially be a client of yours, only about three to 5% of those are ready to buy right now. These are the people that are an easy sale. They'll book themselves in. Oh, Millie Clay just joined. Hi, Millie. Um, easy sale. They're going to book themselves in or they just need a good deal that's going to get them across the line. So these are the people that are booking online. They're just messaging you. They've just decided in their head already that they want this and they're ready. Small percent of people. The rest of the people are usually fall into these categories. And this is where most people also go wrong with their marketing is they just focus on promoting things to the top percent. They think everybody's ready to buy and then they get mad when they're not. But your marketing needs to take people from further down the list up step by step to the top. It's the job of your marketing. So number two is they're almost there. They're interested, but they're not ready to buy. They've followed you. They like your stuff. They've been thinking about it. Um, what these people need is they need some connection. They need friendly, helpful, a friendly, helpful experience with you when they reach out or when you, they talk to you, when you talk to them or when you get them commenting and then you reply and you build a little bit of a connection. They need support. They usually need a follow-up. A lot of businesses never follow up with people and they're just like, oh, they ignored me or they ghosted me or they said no like I'll just never message them again no these people are they could become a customer but you need to follow up and like hey babe are you still interested in this just wanted to check um a lot of them will come back around and be like actually yes I just you know need some more information I need a little bit more attention or whatever um they need you to help them make the decision they need to be guided by someone they need help sometimes to overcome their fears and objections. I know when people come to work with me, a lot of people, and this is just every business, people are scared of spending money. Um, even me sometimes, like I have heaps of money, but I still go to buy something. I'm like, mm, do I need that? Can I go without it? It's not about the money. It's about the, the fear and the objection or like, 
your mind just comes up with reasons to stop you from doing things. So I know that when people come to me, like I know how they feel and I try to talk to them about that and help them to make the decision that's best for them. Sometimes it's not buying. Sometimes it is. Sometimes I just be like, look, just try it for the first week or the first month or something. See how it goes. You don't have to commit forever. Like, and then if it works really well, you'll see the results and you'll be fine. And then you won't be scared anymore. But your clients feel the same way. There's so many people, they don't have that level of trust with you yet. They, they, they're scared of spending money and it's your job, not theirs. It's your job as the marketer and the salesperson to help them feel comfortable and get them across the line. So the next level of people are the thinking and researching. These are the people that will reach out. They'll ask for the price. They're not almost there. They're just in researching mode. They're thinking about it. What they need is more information and they need time. You need to follow up with these people as well. You can even ask people, you know, are you thinking about getting this done soon or are you just kind of getting some information right now? And they'll tell you and then you're like, cool, how much information do you need? What do you want to know? I'm not going to try and sell you anything. I'll just give you all the information. And then all of a sudden they've had a mate, an amazing experience with you. They love you. They love your brand. When they are ready, they're going to buy. Um, you can also follow up with them a little bit later, like, hey, um, did you need any more info? What are you thinking? Um, you know, and they get them up the line. Um, there's people also that are just not thinking about it at all right now. They're just going about their lives. They don't care, really. They just got other things that they're focusing on. What they need is to see more information about your product or service, how it works, why it works, why people get it done, like information, teach them. Um, on their social media feeds, they need proof, they need reviews, they need to know how it's going to benefit them, what it's going to do for them to get them interested. Um, and there's people that are not interested at all and they're the ones that are just going to ignore you or even criticize what you do. Those ones you just don't really try with. Just let them go on their merry way. Um, but the other four, this is the job and the purpose of your marketing and your sales skills um, is to always be thinking about different people at different levels and with advertising as well. It's really important that you have ads running for different people at different levels. So you can have ads running for people that are just in the researching mode and they're just kind of educational ads. You can have ones that are for people that are ready to buy. You can have people ads for people that are almost there, but they need a chat. Um, it's all possible. So you need to understand why your customers buy as well. There are so many different types of customers and reasons and reasons why people buy things. You need to understand as many as you can. One of the best ways to do this is to pay attention to your own shopping habits, your own thoughts, your own emotions, the, the justifications that you make as to why you should buy something or why you won't buy something when you talk yourself out of it. If you can start becoming really self-aware and look at your own thinking patterns, then you can start to realize, well, hey, my clients and people out there are doing this as well. And then when you understand that, this is what I've always done. I just pay attention to my own thoughts and I'm like, well, other people are going to be like that too. So I'm like, what would I need to get me across the line? So, you know, some people impulse buy things because they just decide I want it now. I want it immediately. Um, but really, when you think about it, when you impulse buy, were you thinking about it? And how many times did you see it? Did you see lots of ads about it? Did you like follow this business for ages? Did you have some kind of thought or fantasy that caused this impulse decision? Or is it already an existing kind of problem that you've had in your life and like this thing just solves it? Or was it just like, oh, pretty, I want that. Um, <laughs> but like think about the thoughts that you have to get you to make the purchase. Or are you a strategy buyer? Are you someone who researches and compares and collects all the data and you compare things before making a thoughtful decision or the best decision for you um, my boyfriend's like this I'm more of an impulse buy person it, but it depends what it is some other things I'll think about for a friggin ages before I buy them how long does it take you do you talk yourself out of it five times before finally talking yourself into it um, and your customers do all these things too Rachel said, I'm the best client, such an impulse buyer. I see it once and bang, sold. <laughs> That's good. But also do you stick around and do it too? Because I know one of my, uh, it's an ADHD kind of trait. I get really excited. I impulse buy something and then I'm like over it <laughs> like a month later. Um, so I have to force myself to be like, depending on what it is, like, no, I need to stick this out. Um, yeah. Whereas strategic people can sometimes be a little bit more, 
you know, routine and paced out. So this is all the different, this is why you've got to know what kind of personalities you want to attract. Um, so knowing this, you need to constantly keep showing up and showing your market what you can do for them. You need to understand that some people are ready to buy and some are not. And you need to meet them where they're at instead of just telling them to book now all the time. You need to have different kinds of call to actions. You need to run ads to your ideal clients, showing them your work over and over again in different ways consistently to get them to start thinking about inquiring or buying your service. And if this sounds hard, like if you're, if you're one of those people that's like, oh my God, it sounds like it's so much, you're already posting on social media. You're already doing it. It's not, doesn't take you very much time, extra time. You just got to change the type of posts that you're doing. So I just wanted to mention that because some people are like, oh my God, it's a lot. It's like, if you're already doing it, it's not that much. You just got to change the type of posts. Um, so rather than just running like one ad and not having people immediately wanting to throw their money at you the first time they see it and deciding that ads don't work for you because this is what some people do. They're like, I just did a post, it didn't work, ads don't work. Um, no, you have to keep, like the way that I became good at ads is because I was kind of obsessive with like, well, if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to kind of frigging figure out what people want. I just have ideas. I'm going to throw them out there. I'm going to see what works. And then I look at them, that worked, that didn't, that worked, that didn't. Hmm, people like this, they don't like that. Um, and then I learned from experience and I'm still coming up with ideas and testing them. Like literally today, I wrote two ads today. I posted one in the Peace, Love and Profit group. I was like, who can try this for me? Like, can you test this this week? <laughs> See if it does well, because um, some of them go really well. I have a good feeling about it, but some of them don't. And I'm just like, you guys are going to test it for me. Thank you. Um, if it works, they make money. It's great for everyone. So yeah, I always understood that there were people out there who didn't know or trust me yet. So it's my job to show up, show them what I can do for them, prove to them that my work is good, show them what it can do for them and how it will make their life better, but also be empathetic towards where they are now. Um, and I'm not going to stop or I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to complain about it. That's just the attitude that I have developed over time. I used to be someone who would complain and bitch about things or like, you know, gossip about my clients with my staff and things like that. I definitely used to be that person. But I got to a point where I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to take complete responsibility. I'm going to try my very best to be grateful for all my clients and to help them with lovingly at all times, um, you know, working on yourself and changing your mindset. And this is why my program is called Peace, Love and Profit, because a lot of changing how you think and feel about other people is what's going to lead to the profit. Cool. Ryan, kiddos, what are you doing in here? <laughs> Ryan just joined. Anoop just joined. So <clears throat> this is what getting bookings looks like from your perspective. <clears throat> you need, from your perspective, you need to make sure that your branding and your posts are attracting the people that you want to help and, and people who want what you sell. You need to be sharing a mixture of posts that share results some that are sharing information, some like memes or funny personality type things, some personal stories, and some that ask your audience and clients questions to get them to involve. This is like the kind of ideal mix of content. Carly's just joined. Hey, Ryan. Um, you want to run ads and you want to boost posts that attract new people to your brand and business at all times. That should be non-negotiable, number one priority. I've had ads running for my own businesses for literally since I've started a business, since advertising was available, like in my coaching business, I never turn ads off. There's always at least one ad running that's bringing new people to my business. Um, and sometimes that ad gets messages and bookings. And sometimes it's just one that's bringing new people to me because I know then they're going to start seeing my content and some of them are going to turn into clients. But I don't expect that the first time someone sees something from me that they're just immediately going to buy. Sometimes it happens. But a lot of the time, people need to get to know you first. So um, you also should be chatting to people in Messenger like a helpful friend instead of just giving them prices and heaps of info and being ghosted or told you're too expensive. Um, and you need to be enthusiastic about your business as much as possible and really come from the heart and think about how your services help other people like physically or emotionally um, 
and what you sell every day that you're actually excited to show off what you can do for people because you love it um, because you want to share it with as many people as possible. Michael said, uh, Michael says, is it normal to have more lost clients than new ones coming in? Not normal, but that's a problem that can be fixed. If you've, if you've got a lot of clients that aren't coming back, then that's definitely something that can be fixed. There's just something missing there. There's usually some like an emotional connection thing or a strategy thing. Maybe they're not being followed up with. Maybe they just feel it's sometimes a follow-up thing um, or a rebooking thing or a customer experience thing. All of that can be improved. I love that topic, actually. I can't talk about it right now, but I have, I teach it. Um, but you ideally want new clients coming in all the time, every week, every month, and you want a percentage of them, the highest percentage that you could possibly get. Um, high industry standard is normally like 80 plus percent. Standard is like 70, 75, 60, and low would be like under 50%. Um, but yeah, you want to be retaining customers. If you're not, there's a problem. I have a whole little mini course called put the damn plug in, which talks about that because if your clients aren't coming back, it's like trying to fill a bathtub with the plug out. You're just going to, you're stuck there forever. The only way to fill your business and keep growing is to have the plug in and keep a lot of those clients coming back. Um, so, and this is what your marketing looks like from your customer's perspective. So they're bored, they're on their phone, they're scrolling, they're on the couch, on the toilet, at work, whatever they're doing. They see an awesome picture or a video that gets attention, that gets their attention of like the results that you got for a client um, or a story that you want to tell about a client um, because you're getting in front of them as an ad, right? So sometimes you can't rely on organic strategies if you're not getting heaps of engagement because you're just not being seen. If you're someone who's currently posting regularly, but your posts just aren't being seen and they're getting like two likes, you're kind of just wasting your time. Like it's literally not working. So you need to start paying to get your posts, like improve your posts first and then pay to get them in front of the right people. Um, and then they see it. And then if it gets their interest because the writing, the wording is like about them or about someone like them, they're like, cool, I'm focused on this now. It's about me. They click it, they read it and they're either going to follow you to see more or they're going to comment on it or they're going to message you to ask a question. Now, if they get a really nice, helpful reply or a nice message to say like, hi, I'm Carissa, thanks for messaging. Um, tell me about your hair or you know, what are you thinking or whatever. Um, tell me about your skin. They're so impressed already at the friendly human service and the faster you can do this, the better as well. I know it's hard sometimes when you're busy, but the speed that you get back to people is important or you can have an automated little one that goes out first to, to start the conversation and then get them talking about themselves. Um, and then if they have a nice little chat with you, they're either going to inquire um, or, or book in. If they think, yes, I need this. This is a great deal. These guys seem really helpful. I'm excited. Or they might follow you for a while to suss you out, see more from you, build more of a connection over time before they finally reach out to inquire. Or sometimes people just quietly book themselves in online because they don't want to talk to you um, or anyone, not you, but just anyone. So that's what it looks like from the customer's perspective, getting bookings through ads. Um, so when you start to do this, you can start making thousands of extra dollars per month. So whatever you're making now, let's say you're doing 5K a month, you could be doing 7K a month in a couple of months from now, then 10K a month in a couple of months from now, once you get ads running that are constantly bringing the people in. And that's what I help people to do. So um, Tonya is a really good example. She booked 72 clients from an ad campaign she was running um, using one of my strategies. She said, our average brow wax is normally booked in within over 60 days is 35. So she normally gets 35 brow waxes over two months, um, but she's upped that to 72. So that's amazing. Um, this one, I can't remember the name, sorry, st uh, started with me at the end of June and on average over three months spent $270 on ads and the average monthly return just from new clients was five and a half grand. So she added an extra five and a half grand per month in new customers um, just from turning on ads that were working and bringing people into her. Um, so it sounds really simple. I think when I explain it and it kind of is, you probably see, I see people all the time saying like business is simple. Everyone overcomplicates it. And I like, it's still 
it's still work. <laughs> it's You've still got to do the work, but it can actually be really simple when you break it down and when you do the right things. So an ideal client sees an ad that they like, they message you, have a chat, some book and some don't. You might get five inquiries, you might talk to five people and one book's in. You might talk to 10 people and three of them book in. Don't get emotionally attached to how many people buy and how many they don't either because otherwise you're always going to be like, ah, oh, ah, oh, like just be grateful for the ones that do book. Amazing. I got, I ran an ad for $50 and I got three new clients and they spent $200 each. I just turned $50 into 600. Bam, that's how it works. And then if those three clients come back again, then you've just turned $50 into 3000 if like you know they come back regularly throughout the year so this is advertising is like buying customers for your business um you've got to figure out how much it costs you to buy a client it's going to be different for every single business um and then you just keep getting as many messages as many inquiries as you can and buy as many clients as you can so i think i've shown this little graphic before but i like it for a visual representation of this um, if you have seen it before, it might help you to look at it again. If you haven't, it might help you to look at it. Um, so you run an ad. Now it's either going to not get any interest at all. And when it doesn't, if it doesn't get any interest at all, people either give up or they change the offer, they change the text, they change the imaging, they change the targeting until it works. So the white ones are what you should do. Um, and this is kind of what I do and what I teach and what I help people with. Um, or you run an ad and it does work. It gets comments, it gets messages, it gets bookings. Awesome. Um, if it gets messages, you chat with new people that are messaging you from the ads. One of my clients um, showed me a screenshot today and she got 22 messages from one of her ads last week. Awesome. Um, and she tracked how much money she made and how many bookings she got from them as well. I can't remember that, but I remember it was 22 messages. I'll bring it up later. Um, but Either if, if you're chatting with people, it's only going to go one or two ways. Either they don't book, they need more info or they aren't ready yet. Now, what a lot of people do is they give up. They're just like, oh, they're not ready. Okay, no. What you need to do is follow up and learn more about them. Build a little bit of better connection. See if they're still interested. See if they need any more information. If they ghost you again, you can follow up one more time and be like, hey, babe, just check in. You're still interested or not? Um, and then I give up if they ghost me again after that. But a lot of people reply on that third follow up, which is interesting. A lot of people don't make it to three follow-ups. Um, next tip, they book in and become a new client. Oh, sorry, yeah, two ways. So either they don't book or they book. Now, if they do book in and become a new client, that's either going to go one or two ways. Either they come in once or twice and never return again, which means there's sometimes people just give up. All right, they're gone. Whatever, they didn't come back. I don't know what to do. Or what you should do is you follow up. Um, sometimes people just forget to rebook. Or sometimes you need to follow up and ask how they are. And then they feel like, oh, cool. They're checking in on me. I like them. Let's let's go back there. Um, now, if you follow up, that's going to go one of two ways. They're either going to ignore you. They're no longer interested. You can just send them love. Cool. Good luck. Wish you luck. Hope you have good life. Um, or, oops, they forgot to rebook. Um, they'll come back. They're still a client. Yay. Thanks for following up with me. Um, and if they do book in and become a new client, the ideal goal is they become a happy, loyal, regular client and that makes you thousands of dollars per year. It's a filtration process. All of these things are going to happen, except for hopefully the giving up ones. We want to get rid of them. But you're always going to get some that say yes, some that say no, some ads that work, some that don't, some people that come back, some people that don't. Um, so you've just got to accept that, that like this is how business works. Cool. Let's do it. Let's grow a business. Hi, Sarah Blake. Um, so this is how you get the client. So if you currently have room for a lot more clients right now, um, or even just some, your days are not full, they're not busy enough, and you can fit a lot more people in, um, all you need to make that happen to get more clients booking in is between one to three ads. You can do more, but one to three ads running that get really get your ideal client's attention, gets them in the door. If you have an ad running that brings in one to new two new clients per day or even one to two per new clients per week. Uh, let's go with per day. Um, that's five to 10 per week or 20 to 40 per month. Um, and when they come back weekly or monthly or couple, every couple of months, depending on what kind of business you run, um, all of a sudden your business starts to make thousands more per month, just growing gradually throughout the month. And I try and encourage most of my, all my clients to track 
their results and their growth throughout the year. Because once you start to see it happening, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's happening. Um, so this one says like um, six new clients booked in five days. Um, only spent $27 on ads and made $300 return. That's amazing. Still in conversation with nine other people. Um, Malise said, I started the course last week and implemented everything um, for my launch on Thursday. Yesterday, we booked an additional four and a half grand of bookings using the new client voucher. Um, and you spent a maximum of $50 on the post. So that was an insanely amazing um, result from a $50 post. She made four and a half grand. She had a high price service. So that helps. Um, the ad hasn't been approved yet, but this is the response. $2,490 worth of people who have booked so far and multiples of messages still ha happening. I can barely keep up with the comments. I had to share because you should be proud of your techniques. So those are all real screenshots of people that have used some of the ads that I've written. Um, so where people get stuck is a lot of salons don't know what to say or what to write with their photos. They might have really great work and they might be awesome with their clients in person. But when it comes to social media, they freeze up. They're so unsure of what to write in their captions or for their ads. Um, and this is often the number one thing that keeps them stuck and it keeps them not growing and it keeps them not attracting enough clients so this is why I started teaching this 10 years ago and sharing everything I was doing in my hair and beauty salons because it was working for me. And I was like, why isn't it working for other people? I'm just doing this. And then they're like, I don't know. And then I'd be like, well, do this. And they do it and then it works. So your ads and posts simply are not working to get you clients if they are not getting comments or messages. Um, and this needs to be fixed if you want to use your social media to make money. I see that as just kind of a fact. So if you get stuck with any of these, not knowing what to write with your pictures, not knowing who to target in a boosted post, not knowing what kind of ads to run in Ads Manager, being ghosted by people when you give them the price, not getting a lot of comments or message inquiries, feeling really overwhelmed and really stressed about your marketing and just like, ah, oh, nothing's working, I don't know what to do. Feeling like you just don't want to do it. A lot of people just think they don't want to do it just because of this stuff's happening. They're like, I suck. I don't want to do it. I want to outsource it. I hate it. And it's just because this has been their experience so far, all this other stuff up the top. Um, or your business is stagnant, not growing, or even going backwards. Um, next slide, please. I can help you to fix this. It is literally what I do. Um, I can give you lots of ads that work that you can copy and paste with your own images. Um, I can give you the interests to use for your targeting and tell you how much to spend on them. I can give you scripts to use for your conversations in Messenger and for following up to get people booked in. Um, and I also teach how to write and run your own successful ads so that you can know what I know and learn a long-term skill that will serve you in like this business and any future businesses that you may have. Um, so once you understand marketing and sales and you know how to like put things out there that people want and then how to talk to them in a way that gets them to buy, these are skills that, yeah, you can just use to sell anything in the future. Really, really valuable. Um, my personal doubling businesses strategy, I wanted to just quickly share as well, because, um, a few people have been asking me about how to set up businesses to run without them lately, or saying that next year they want to work less or hire more people and things. So my strategy, my personal strategy has always been that I start something, I get it working. Like I started my salon, I got it working busy within like a year and a half, just doing it myself with spray tanning hair extensions. Then I systemize everything. I document, I write down, like not write physically type up and document, take pictures of exactly how everything is done from like getting the customer in the door, doing the consultation, applying, uh, maintenance, follow-ups, everything. Every single thing that I do is documented and becomes a system that someone else can follow. Then I hire someone and they take over. They do what I'm doing. And then, um, yeah, I delegate that and teach them how to follow the system. Then I work on, spend my time on growing getting more clients in, doing more marketing because now we can take on more people because we have another team member. And then I just repeat that strategy and do the same thing over and over again. I'll move on to the next idea or the next offer or the next business or the next location or whatever it is. But first I get one thing working without me needing to do it. 
Um, so if you are wanting to have multiple locations or a business that can run without you, um, this is what you need to do. And once again, it does require taking, like it's a lot of mindset stuff because physically you can do this. But a lot of people are like, what if the clients don't like it? What if the staff don't like it? What if they think this about me? What if this happens? It's like, these are all not in your reality. They are all in your head. So mindset and thought management is so important, but also having a plan for like, if you have a fear, you can plan for what to do with that fear comes to true. And then you have a plan for that. So a lot of growing your business is thoughts. Um, Vicky says, what do you do if you're not good with numbers or keeping records? Outsource it, get someone else to do that. <laughs> That's what I do. I suck at numbers really bad. I have my assistant send me updates on my numbers every week because I don't want to do it. It's not a strength of mine. It's not worth my, like, it's not a good use of my time. My time's better spent on marketing and sales. Um, but you can do basic tracking. Like you can just look at your customer, like your point of sale software and be like, oh, okay, cool. And like, look at your ads and be like, radio, we spent this much and we made this much. Amazing. Or your ads will say how many messages and how many comments. It's counting just counting so either you've got to do it yourself or you get someone else to do it um i'm pro getting someone else to do it so this one was um i posted my post last night at nearly 8 p.m it got 60 comments by midnight now it's 9 a.m the next day it was at 91 comments so far i've made not six bookings and reminded about six regulars to book up until christmas this one said, hey, I want to send a quick message to say I posted and boosted this post as per recommendation last night. And today I've had two new brow tattoo bookings, six inquiries waiting for their reply back. It's only been 24 hours. Um, Sue Ellen posted a boost for $5 a day. It's been up for two hours and she's had three bookings. Um, and this one said, I know I keep annoying you almost every day, but you need to know we made $5,100 today, which is super cool. She was so excited. So if you are open to trying something new, investing into the growth of your business, um, you too can be sharing results like these in a few weeks from now or a couple of weeks or a couple of months, depending on how much effort you put in. Um, so my mission is to help you get your business as successful and profitable as possible so that it can support the life that you want to live. I personally believe that a business should be working for you to give you everything that you want rather than you working your ass off just to keep it alive, which is where a lot of people are, unfortunately. Um, I've written and tested over 300 plus ads for hair, beauty, permanent makeup, lash and brow, injectables, body sculpting, teeth whitening, skin needling, nails, and more. Um, probably closer to 400 now. I think I need to recount. I've written a lot this year and I, that number was last year. So I'm sure I've written over 100 ads this year. Um, I'm going to give you the very best ones. Um, I have literally got thousands of screenshots like this from over the years, like folders and folders full of them. If you scroll back through my Instagram or, or my Facebook, like they're just like this for years. Um, so yes, you can absolutely double your business, double the money that you make by improving your marketing. Um, how it works. If you're interested in working with me and growing your business, doubling your business throughout 2024, you take a deep breath. <gasps> you decide, yes, I'm ready to give this a go. Um, yes, it's always normal to be scared or nervous. Um, after you've signed up, and I'll let you know the options in a second, you open the first email, you join the private Facebook group, you read the instructions, you watch the videos, you copy and paste and edit and post the first posts and ads. You can do that like within the first couple of hours. Um, and you follow the boosting post instructions. You start watching the comments and messages come in. You start chatting to everyone um, and you start getting some bookings. Now, people that are really um, active and like into it, they will prioritize it and they do it. And these are the people that start making money and getting results like the first week. Some people are really fast paced and some people are more like slow and steady. It's fine. Either way, you do it at your own pace. There's no pressure. Um, you share your wins and you keep going, getting more bookings every month. So this one up here said, I put my post up this morning by 12 o'clock. I had 15 inquiries and now have three confirmed deposits, pay appointments. Carissa Hill, this is crazy. And only after two weeks. 
Um, how much money will you make? It totally depends on you and your business. So usually more established businesses that have been around for a few years already or more that have a decent online following, like over a thousand followers, um, and they've got an okay or a pretty strong brand reputation already, um, doing between like five to 20K months. These people typically get a lot of bookings very quickly because they're already a little bit established and they've already got an audience. Um, these people can usually make thousands of dollars from just one post and like keep it running for a long time. If you're a newer, smaller businesses with a small audience and you're doing only like one to 5K per month, these people can get bookings, but it usually take, it's a little bit slower for them because they don't have that kind of already existing audience or brand recognition yet. So they need to also at the same time focus on growing their audience and reputation, um, which I do have templates for as well. So they'll never usually get increases by like, you know, a thousand dollars a month steadily. Um, that's just like the general rule. I have seen other people go like start from nothing and go really high, really fast. It depends on their attitude, to be honest. Some people are just really freaking driven and some people are like, ah, I hope this works. So it really depends on your attitude. Um, this one says, Carissa, I know you've probably heard this a hundred times, but your shit is the bomb. Can't believe how fast this is working. My business is only a newbie, but my revenue has over doubled for this month. Um, previous month averaged around 1700 a week. October is looking to average about two and a half grand a week. My goal is $3,000 a week. So that's 